But yesterday, uh, I mean, there was a press briefing where Noguchi Memorial Institute, the Ghana Health Service, the Ministry of Information, they all came out to explain the numbers. And that's because there was some sort of confusion as to whether there were over 80,000 tests that had been done and had been put out by uh, the Ghana Health Service was an indication of individual tests done or some repetition tests as well. And they explained that all the numbers they've put out represent different individuals. And it's not about uh, the people who may have done two, three tests and all of that, because that was the ind indication we got earlier. And there's been some confusion about some other things as well, how the tests are done, the capacity of the Noguchi Memorial Institute and also the KCCR and other testing centers um, as well. And so we'll be speaking to someone who would later raise some of these worries if if there should be any worry at all. And he is, uh, he specialized in infectious disease and also public health, sexual and reproductive health and rights laws, HIV and social medicine. He's Dr. Uh, Christopher Seth Apia, and he's joining us now. Hello, sir. Good morning. And thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm good. And you? Good morning Fine, to you. Thank you. Good morning. It's a little dark where you are, but we'll, we'll still manage anyway. Um, yesterday, there was yeah. a press briefing, and I'm sure that you had time to watch it as well. And like I said, before that, there had been a lot of confusion as to the numbers being put out, the lag in putting these figures out, even on the Ghana Health Service as well. The explanation was not adequate, according to a lot of people out there as well. First of all, I want to find out from you that should we have cause to worry about the figures being put out and the belief maybe that governments may be manipulating the numbers? Yeah, let me say that. Um, good morning to your viewers. Um, I think that this whole COVID, if we're going to be able to address the critical concerns as far as flattening the curve and maintaining or, as it were, dealing with it appropriately, Data is very essential. Mm. That's the first thing that we need to acknowledge. Um, if we do not acknowledge data, the, the, the utility of data in such a situation, we would not be able to know where we have come from and where we are going. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we need to acknowledge is that data is of much essence. While acknowledging that, let us come to the very critical point of whether there is an issue of manipulation of data or other... Okay. And the thing is that if we are looking at the, 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 the number of texts that has been done, mm -hmm. you know, whether there's a discrete count in terms of individual cases yeah. or whether it's about the number of texts, I think yesterday from the onset, the information minister did say or did admit that the text that we have, that is a 68,000 plus numbers mm -hmm. that we have, it's actually not discrete individuals that he did admit. And at the so, beginning. At the beginning. But later, I, I think um, the professor from the biology, Noguchi. heading the biology yes. department yeah. of Noguchi came to throw light more, uh, more light on it. Mm -hmm. You see, we should not necessarily be worrying. But then, this is data. So if our data is being misleading, then it's, it's troubling. It's troubling because if you can only calculate the, your, cumul your cumulative incidence or your incidence on the basis of the number of discrete that you, tests that you have done. Mm -hmm. When I say discrete tests, I'm talking about unique individual tests that has been carried out. Let me do a simple analysis. If we had people about 1,030 or 1,040 thereabout mm -hmm. who were self a mandatory quarantine, and out of this population, we'd expect that they would carry out about two tests before, yes. if they prove negative, they'll be allowed to go home. Mm -hmm. So if you multiply that, that gives us about 2,030 or so, or 2,040. 2000 and, okay, 2,060 maybe. Yeah. yeah. And 60. So if you have that figure, and then you have about, let's say, 99 people um, recovering as of the time. Mm hmm now we have about 120, but then we want to use that data prior to the news, that, a news conference yesterday. So I want to use the data prior to that. That gives about 300 because these recovered cases, they would have texted positive in the first instance, mm -hmm. then two negative texts before they will be declared 
recovered. Yeah. So that gives us an average of about 300. If you add that, that one gives us about, say, 2,360 or so, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have about nine fatalities. Mm -hmm. So roughly, let us peg our figure around 2,400. Mm -hmm. If we peg our figure around 2,400, the implication is that these 2,400 should not be added to the 60. 8,000 figure that we are talking about. Why do you say that? As, as, as marginal as it may be, when you deduct that figure, we will be getting around somewhere around um, 66,000 thereabout. And so if we get that figure 66,000 thereabout and we are computing our incidence rate, our cumulative incidence, our cumulative incidence will then jump up to around 1.7% and not the 1.52 that, that is being reported to us. Mm. Okay. So, so, so it, it's a cause for worry because the positivity rate that we have, as of yesterday, I checked the Ghana Health Service portal and it reported 1.52. Mm -hmm. So if you have discrete count, then you are going to have unique cases, about 66,000 thereabout. And that will bring our cumulative incidence or positivity rate to Around 1.7%. No, but, but yesterday, the professor of virology... 1.52. Okay, the professor of virology did state that the over yeah, 68,000 were all individual tests. So so I'm, I'm getting a little confused why you're saying that we should still take out a certain number from the mandatory quarantine. Because from what he says, the repeat so, tests... <laughs> Are separate and that forms a separate uh, figure which they have they are yet to put out and so as citizens we should take the over 60,000 uh, tests that they have given to us as individual tests but unfortunately our professor did not provide us how many of the other tests were duplicative tests yeah that he said is a different figure but yes he didn't mention it so what is the figure he didn't give us a figure. He said that is part of, I think he well, mentioned that accurate. they are still accumulating let that. Me, and so let me, we'll get it later. Let me show you another issue that is quite worrying. Okay. Um, if you look at the president's presentation, I think he sees state of the nation address to us. He did say that there was, or there were about 79% of the cases mm -hmm. that as at the time were imported. And as of the six address, we had about 378 confirmed cases. Right. Mm -hmm. So, if 79% of that case will give out about 299, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And then if it were 299, you remember that around the ninth or 10th thereabouts, we had about 10 cases in Tamale. Yeah. That had not been added to threshold. Let us even keep that case, 10 case in Tamale. And not add it to rate. Mm -hmm. So we have about 299 cases that the presence in his state of a nation uh, in his um, seat address. It's, it's actually 297, me. pardon me. So it's 297. Huh? Yeah. Go ahead. Come again. It's 297. Okay. Yeah. So 297. So if these numbers are imported cases as the president delivered to us. Mm -hmm. If you use that number to compute the number of imported cases, this number cannot go down because these are confirmed imported cases. Yeah. Simply calculate that number as a proportion of our case or our positive cases that we have. If you are even to calculate it out of the 1,042, we will be getting around 26%. Okay. So the and figure we have... Okay, so you're saying that the percentage that we have on the Ghana Health mm -hmm. Service page is not representative of the true picture? That is the point, because on the page now, I checked it before I, I came online now, on the page, it's telling us that 18% of the cases are people with travel histories, reported cases. Mm. But I'm saying that, as at the time that it was even the seat address that the president gave to us, there were about 297 of the cases that ha the president had told us that they were imported. Mm -hmm. And that 
as a proportion of the total number of cases that we have now, whether you use the 1,154, it will give us 26%. Or whether you use the uh, 1,042, that's going to give us around 29%. So at this point, so, do, you, do you think that this is deliberate or you think it's just a mistake? It was overlooked? What do you I, think it is? I, I, I would not, I would, I would be very cautious in saying it's deliberate. Okay. But my point is that when we are dealing with the data, the ministry or the government should be able to admit that here we have gone wrong. So let us correct it. And it's not deliberate. Mm. So that we can all stream along. I, I will be the very last person to admit that the KCC, uh, KCCR and the Noguchi scientists working there are having to do something with the data. Mm -hmm. But also be also saying that the ministry must also be candid in, in also admitting that we have gone wrong here. Other than that, it gives people the opportunity to spin around. Because if you throw very legitimate concerns, like what I have said, if we can, I think that was the second paragraph mm. in the present seat, address or so. Ninth April. Mm. He was categorical. But we had three, seven, eight cases. And 79% of that cases were imported. And the president went ahead and even um, tried to praise himself as of a sort by virtue that because the border has been closed and our airlines have been closed, that has been justified. But I'm saying that if we have 297, that, that case alone cannot go down. That case alone, that the president did say that it's a confirmed case of imported, uh, a confirmed imported case. If you calculate the percentage of that relative to how many positive cases we have had, that should not give us the 18% being reported as of yesterday and as of there were a few minutes ago that I, uh, I, spoke, uh, I began speaking with you, that I checked the Ghana Health Service portal. That should give us around 26%. So, so something is not tallying up somewhere. Okay. And I think that the ministry should be candid and not rubbish everybody as trying to spin around. So that means that you're saying Ghanaians should not accept the figures. Not necessarily that, but I mean, we should look at it with a second eye and keep questioning. When it comes to epidemiological data, if the government is not willing to admit that we have been wrong here, definitely Ghanaians are going to spin around the data. Okay. Okay. So yes. So they should be candid and say that, okay, we have gone wrong here. We have done a reanalysis of it, that it was an error. Then we move forward. But other than that, you would expect people spinning around and raising a lot of questions about the credibility of the data, which at this moment in our, our time, we do not need that kind of narrative because it shifts focus from the actual fight that we are doing. Okay, so, so when you say it shifts focus, do you think that if we had the real numbers and we understood it that well, we probably would take more precaution and, you know, we'll respect social distancing and people would understand how serious this is? Does it make any difference? As well, because it, it, in previous studies by the WHO and other independent epidemiology studies, we've seen that the incidence rate for this disease is around 1.4 to 7.0. Mm -hmm. If you look at, so if Ghana is doing 1.74, assuming that we take these numbers from the 68,000, which uh, from your narrative, the ministry will not want to admit that. And unfortunately, it's also not, it's also not willing to tell us how many discrete counts are available. Then people will begin to ask, 1.5 to 1.74, it doesn't make that much of a noise. But then it will tell you that, yes, the, the incidence rate or the cumulative incidence that we are picking up, it's increasing. Though it's increasing, it's not that alarming. But my okay. point is that we are dealing with data. So the data should be as credible as, 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 as far as it is. Okay. All right. Anyway, Dr. Seth Apia, thank you so much for speaking to us. And, um, well, let, let's wait and see what explanation, moving on, government will give to us and whether there will be an admission, if any, that they may have made a mistake. But thank you again for speaking to us. And we wish you the best. He is specialized in infectious disease, public health, sexual and reproductive health and rights law, HIV and social medicine as well.